Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? High Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Rachel, can we have a conversation about whether or not you support me? Why is this even a conversation? Of course I support you. Okay, well, let's just tell people what happened a second ago before we got on the podcast. <laughs> I had great news for Rachel when we jumped on the pod. So I've come up with a brand new song. And Rachel's first reaction was skepticism about the song. And then her second reaction was to assert that I plagiarized the song in some sort of way. This is very upsetting. Okay. Well, if you follow our Reddit, shout out to, to Thought Warriors Reddit, we know this isn't the first time you have plagiarized an original, quote, original song. First of all, I've never plagiarized any song. <laughs> okay. Okay. Because here's beat the thing. For animal games was all too familiar. But let me tell you something. Y'all, all y'all do is lie. This this is the reason why. Who's because y'all? Y'all y'all hold me to a different standard than y'all would Who's hold. Who's y'all? Okay. You ever heard Juicy by the notorious B. I. G. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Obviously, Juicy Fruit. You ever heard uh Mo Money More Problems? <laughs> Obviously, I'm coming out, Diana Ross. So I'm pretty sure that they acknowledge it. You they were didn't. like, what? This you, is- it's, it's mad niggas that heard Juicy. I had never heard the uh, M2 mate. Like, it's mad niggas that heard but if, that. But if they looked at the album, they would see that the beat was part, from, uh, part of that song. All I'm saying is the way I look at this is that and, you know, mailbag time, semi-sonic. Well, the way I look at this is like, I'm like the puffy of jingles. Oh, and this is why I can't take you seriously. Why? Puffy just got a Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay. Okay, for his contribution. Right. You just compared yourself to Puffy with jingles. Well, I mean. Van. Van. Just because, and I don't have a say. You unilaterally make your song segments in this podcast. Does it make you the Puff Daddy of Jingles? I'm sorry. I am the Puff. Number one, I am the Puff Daddy of Jingles. So, you know, <laughs> number, number two is I think I'm in a position to talk about I have you know whether or not I'm the Puff Daddy of Jingles because I've brought a lot of jingles to the table. You know what I'm saying? And, and for me, to Hit me- miss. To me, I don't understand why you can't just be happy for me. I love the Animal Game song. It brings me so much joy. And I think I'm on record of saying that before. But it, well, what's the new song? Let me judge that. What's the new song? Okay. And what was the inspiration behind it? What was the inspiration behind the new song? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So this was the inspiration. I was... Uh, I was thinking about that old TMZ story where TMZ asked whether or not black people should be called African Americans or niggas. Because <laughs> yeah. I did an interview today. Okay. And the person brought somebody with them. And then they asked me to tell the story of my demise at TMZ again, which don't really want to talk about, but I talked about it. And it got me to thinking about all the other stuff. And so I I thought about the- Are these Dallas a, folks? These are Dallas people. Dallas people talk funny. How come you don't talk like them? How do they talk? Her, their. Because, okay, that's, that's, that's St. Louis. Uh, that's how people talk in Dallas. <laughs> I say her. Oh, for here. Yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> like you say, you know, all you her, know what's you funny know, though because I'm a little different. I'm from there, so I'm. I don't. Yes, I don't really have an accent. Right. But I fully understand Dallas. Yeah. The, have they put you on any Dallas music? Yeah. Uh, no, because apparently you're creating your own. Yeah, I'm creating my own Dallas music. I'm around, I've been, and also when you're around so many music people, when you're doing a show like this, you just get mm-hmm. musical. 
And Who so, have you been around from Dallas? Um, I mean, really, no, really, music people, but just people in the music industry. <laughs> Not really that many artists, but like managers, and yeah, I've gone to studios to record. But this is the song because it's in where it's called "I'm a Nigga." You ready? I'm black. Sure. I'm brown. I'm big. I'm round. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on. 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 I'm black. I'm brown. I'm big. I'm round. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on. 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 I'm a nigga. Come on. I'm brown. I'm big. I'm big. I'm round. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on. I'm a nigga. Come on. Donnie heard me singing it earlier. Donnie, be honest. <laughs> when you heard me singing the song, you was fucking feeling it, right? I wasn't feeling it the first time. This time is was better. The black brown no, being no. around that addition, that's key. That's it. You're not feeling it. He's beating it into your head. <laughs> I was. I started off rolling my eyes. And then I was like, it got a little catchy, and I asked him to stop because I could tell it was getting in my head. That's right. what jingles do. So and then do. the next thing I knew, I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. <laughs> I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. So, so, so I'm here's me. the thing. I'm round. It's going to be stuck in my head and I'm, I'm very upset. I'm a nigga. Come on. So, so here's the thing. Also, the, uh, the Roddy Rich clip got me thinking that. Because let's say that that jingle catches on. What if I want to sing, I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on, which is a fucking hit, right? What do I? I want to talk about the Roddy Rich situation. Yeah, we have to go right into that. Do you think because that- that's all I thought? They the thought warriors do like your songs. Now, the songs before they can sing out loud just fine, but the one you just created creates an issue. What's your question? You were about to say something. I'm saying, are the people at the wireless festival wrong for singing the N word? Yeah. Talk to me, Rachel. I. I, I can't. I feel like we talked, touched a little about this on the podcast. I think we did in the very beginning because we talked about Hannah Brown singing the N word in uh, the baby song "Rock Star." So I feel like this is one of our one of our first conversations we had, and I and a lot of people got on to me who wanted to defend Hannah and said, "Well, she was just singing the lyrics to the song. Like they wrote the lyrics. They don't have a problem with it." Why should you have a problem with it? It goes back to why do you so badly want to say the word? It's it's because the thing because going back to with Hannah, she she didn't say fuck, but she said the N word. Okay, so why can you skip over some words? You have the ability to skip over a word, but why do you want to say that one so badly? What is it? And I don't believe that it being in a song excuses you i don't believe if you're at a concert and everybody's shouting it out the person next to you does that that excuses you because what this is doing is setting you up for failure because one day you're going to be at a concert and you're going to shout it out and you're going to be next to the wrong person and that and and it's on like those are fighting words because i don't want to hear it like on i'm going to say something or do something if I hear you saying it, even if you are singing a song, you should never be that comfortable around black people. You want to do it in your private time and I'm not aware of it, have at it. But I think the the issue, and I'm not excusing it, is that a lot of non-black people will say, well, they don't. these rappers write it in their songs that so they don't have a problem if I sing it. Well, I do. I and a problem. lot of other black people do too. It's definitely wrong. Yeah. Is wrong to say. And it uh we're talking about, of course, Roddy Rich was at the Wireless Festival over in Jolly Old England and he's doing um actually Donnie, run the audio real quick. Sing this shit. The song is so amazing. God damn, Megan did not deserve I, that. I have chills though when I hear the crowd singing it. Not right. once, but twice. 
like real chills. Hold on, but speaking of chills, he I think he says chill at the very end of that clip. I don't know if he does it back. Yeah, let's 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 run it back. Let's listen to it again. He said, yeah. I think he's saying, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Who's, I'll tell you yeah. who's saying chill. The snake in your backyard is saying chill. Don't kill me. So, you um, know what? But, <laughs> uh, but look, here's the thing. It's, uh, this is the reality. The reality is it's a very small thing not to say a word that you know is going to injure a whole group of people. It's a very small thing not to do it. However, when we sell the culture in this way, it's very difficult to ask people to do that. They shouldn't. I don't think so. I don't think they so. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. It's very difficult to ask people to do that because the reality is they're partying with Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich is on the stage talking about she sucked a nigga's soul. They in the crowd, they're in jolly old England. They're like, nigga, nigga, nigga. Pip, pip, cherry. I just don't think that that's if if I found black and this is something that's a part of our culture and how we communicate with one another and I'm artistically expressing that in my songs that does not give you the permission You're right. then to do that as well. You're right. And I just I just hate it so much. You're right. It's it's not nothing wrong. but white privilege. You feel like you you're told you can't say it. So you're gonna say it, and this is this is your end. This is the way that you feel like you can get away with saying it. No, guess who's right? Guess who's right, Rachel? But guess who would have to stop them? The artists. The artists, and they're not because because these so, are the people buying their buying their music. And so I talked to Bird a little bit. Shout out to Bird who works with Roddy Rich. Bird's a big deal, you know. I told Roddy Rich, I said, "Yo," I told I hit Bird. I said, "Yo, man, we're gonna be talking about this um, on the podcast." I think the question isn't whether or not it offends me and you, because we know that it does. The question isn't whether or not it's offensive. The question is whether or not it offends these artists. And I want to talk to them. I want to talk to Roddy Rich. Not in any it doesn't. not in any way that excoriates Roddy Rich or anybody else. I want to know if once you put the N-word in a song, if the usage of that song, you know who we're going to have on the podcast? You know who we're going to have on the podcast? I got somebody, somebody who I know that got uh, really popping on the N-word. Oh, you know, we have, we have Trinidad James on the podcast, my friend Trinidad James. You know, you like, you know, nigga, nigga, niggas in that song. You know, you love that song, All Gold Everything. I love that song. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, nigga, nigga. I, we're going to have Trinidad James on this podcast and we're going to ask him. Uh, cause he just they, he just out of nowhere in the middle of the song, just nigga, 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 <laughs> <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. Don't believe me, just watch. <laughs> Char- Charlemagne, I love I'm, that song. <laughs> Charlemagne was incredulous. He, he goes, bro, you can't be serious with this song. He goes, in the middle of the song, you just say nigga, 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 bro. You don't tell me. <laughs> but I love Trinidad James. Very nice guy, classy guy. Uh, we'll have him on the podcast. He's doing a lot of great stuff. And what we'll did ask Bird him. say? Ah, uh, bird, uh, like bird. Me and bird are talking about some other shit. Bird, oh. <laughs> bird, like bird. Bird didn't. I'm looking at it right now. Bird didn't really say. He didn't say too much. I don't think they have very much. Um, he said, uh, "Yeah, that shit was crazy. Do your thing. Hope it goes big for you." Like he just like he knows. <laughs> he knows his no is no no this. I love Roddy. I love Bird, but um, at the same time, it's just a lot of people were offended, and I wonder how that. I, I wonder how that affects Roddy Rich. Because I just made up a I song. I don't think it. I don't think it does at all. These that audience, that majority white audience, is your fan base. Huh. They're buying your music. They don't want to offend them, so they're gonna say they don't care. And I feel like this conversation has come up with other rap artists who have said they don't care. Hmm. Um. I, 
So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Who said they don't care? I don't know if anybody said they don't care. Have they said that? Tani, will you look it up? I pr- I, like, I promise you it was a big rap artist that that said it wasn't that big of a deal to them. Suge Knight. So, but- <laughs> it wasn't Suge It wasn't Suge Knight. <laughs> Might have been true. It wasn't. But I just... I don't I don't want to just talk to a rap artist. Can we talk to I want a thought warrior. I want a white person to come on and talk about why they feel like like I want somebody from our community. Bring somebody on to talk about that they say they sing it in songs and why they feel like it's okay. I want to talk to a white person. If you are white, this is the best idea that Rachel has had in this minute. Because she has an idea. Good idea. <laughs> Watch if that. you are if you are white and you think it's okay to say the n word in a song, we want you on this podcast next Monday. We're gonna have you on this podcast to talk about why you think you can say the n word in the song, right? And not you know some of these other people I've already talked to. And we're gonna be live. We're gonna be live in person doing this next Monday. Yeah. So if you're really bad, it roll up to the studio. No, I don't. I'm telling you straight up. <laughs> <laughs> on God, don't, like on God, I don't say the nigga, don't, don't say nigga in my motherfucking face. I'm just I, kidding. I, I, right. Don't say no. Don't say it when you come on the podcast either. Don't, I just nah, want to. I just saying. want you to, to hear the other side of it. Don't, no, it, don't on God. Don't do that. Like I'm not. I'm not trying to play tough guy. I'm just saying that's not what we. That's not what we at with. It. I'm kidding. Like I'm not. Look, I say the N word a lot. I just. I just created one of the ten best songs ever made. And it's called I'm a nigga. So I'm not saying again, I'm not against the N-word. You used to fuck my grandparents used to call me the N-word. I'm not tripping on the N-word. Uh, I'm saying it's like, my bad. I, I found another one. It was a little boozy. I didn't realize I was it still It was sharing. boozy. That's what yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> Guess who it was? I was about to give Van three choices. And none other than Baton Rouge's own. Boosie Badass is the one who says he's okay with it. Also, let's not forget Kendrick Lamar stopped the fan when they he said did. it on stage. Mm-hmm. He did. That's the energy that we need. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, look, we're going to talk. I want to talk to. I, I still want to talk to Trinidad. I still want to talk to Trinidad, but Rachel's idea is much better. Sure. Maybe we. Maybe if Trinidad's in LA, we can have him come to the podcast. Oh, we also have. We also. I want to ask you right now. Uh, so we'll. I, look, if you are a, a white. Thought where you think it's okay to say the N word in the song, please come on the podcast. We're looking for you to come on the podcast. Like, I'm begging you not to fucking say the N word in my face or it's gonna go left. Please, please check my history. All right, now, um, <laughs> uh, somebody else who we wanna have on the podcast, I've talked to her about coming on. I wanna know if you wanna talk to her, Rachel. I have to talk to you about this since I, uh, I left the group chat. Um, <laughs> I, I, have to, I, have to talk, I have to talk to you about this. What about, uh, there's a new song out. It's called Get Your Hoe On. Have you heard about this song? Is this the new FNF? I don't know. I haven't. Hold on for a second. Donnie, I want you to play. Don't, Rachel, don't look it up. Damn. Donnie, I want you to play a little bit of Get Your Hoe On. Okay? Look for it right now, Donnie. Play it. And then... I want Rachel to guess who is the rapper behind this new song. Get would I know? On. Would I know this? Yes, you would. You would. Okay. It's, okay. You're not gonna get it because it's not somebody you would expect it for it to be, or maybe it is someone you would expect it, it to be. But dropped a brand new song called "Get Your Hoe On." Okay, Donnie, play the song. <laughs> Do your thing. enough. Who is singing that song? Get your hoe on, Rachel. I want to have her on the podcast. I know her. I've interviewed her before. Who is singing that song, Rachel? Get your hoe on. I don't know. Think about it. I'll give you hints. She leads. Okay, give me hints. A large sex positive movement. 
Iggy? Wrong. Not Iggy, Amber. Amber Rose. She's a rapper? She raps. Apparently now she raps. She's been rapping before. She, I guess she put out a couple of songs. <laughs> I said Iggy. In my mind, I'm like, I knew who it was. I just named it a white rapper. Because <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, Amber's, I didn't realize Amber Amber Rose's not right. Amber Rose's not white. Okay. Can I hear the song again now Amber, that I know it's Amber? Amber Rose's not white. Just let you know that. Not white. What is she? She's a Cape Verdean. It's not white. But isn't that only like a little bit of it? Isn't she majority white? <sighs> she, she said like Amber Rose was. I, I told Amber Rose. I was interviewing Amber Rose. I said you're white. She goes, I'm, I'm not white. Just let you know, she's not white. She's her race is white. Amber Rose not but white. She was. What do you think? She's not white. It's Cape Verdean. That's what she says. She's African. She's a white. Okay, this... she's not white. Okay, because she's from Africa. It's not white. I'll tell you what, okay. uh, you so you, Elon Musk this? isn't white. It's completely different. Elon, Elon Musk, we're talking about lineage versus nationality here. Amber says she's not white. She says she's Cape Verdean. She's not white. Uh, play the song again, Donnie. I'm not going to get into all this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do it. Lies out, bitches. Play. Lies out. Not. Period. Slut. Comma. I'm a rich ass hoe. Baby mama. God damn. Motherfucker. I'm a good dick sucker. What the fuck? Hold on. All my bitches get your motherfucking hoe on. All my bitches get your hoe on. All my bitches get your motherfucking hoe on. What? All my bitches get your hoe on. It's hard to listen to because it's so similar to Get Your Roll On. <clears throat> Lyrically almost as well. You have a problem with us but bringing I don't have... songs back. No, I don't. Because immediately I was like, this is death. I said juvenile. I was like, this, what beat is this? I was like, it's a cash money beat. Um, it's on brand for Amber. Yeah. It's on brand for Amber. Well, she wants to talk about it. And I know, and I, she was talking about it on the podcast. Listen, well, no, I know I her mean, whole I brand her. is like, I actually like the movement of, uh -huh. you know, people calling her something negative and her try, taking power back over it. So to me, this is very on brand for her. Bring her on. You into it? Why not? It's a movement for the summer. Get your hoe on. <clears throat> I don't think it's not. I don't think it's like, a, you know, I don't think it's a song of the summer. I'm still going with FNF. <laughs> yeah, FNF is the song of the summer. What about uh, what about I'm a nigga? <laughs> I was like, wait, what's that again? Donnie. Nah, that's that 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 might that's not for me. Donnie, see if you can make a little beat. No, or find a little Donnie. Beat Donnie's a nigga. got things to. Donnie is a busy man. He's got things a, to do. Look, Stop wasting Donnie's time. There's an amazing producer. His name is Hush. Hush Forte. Everybody go stream Hush Forte's music. Go hit up Hush Forte. And if you go hit up Hush, you know, tell him Van sent you. That's my man. Hush Forte. Works with Femme Dye. Works with a lot of people. Hush, I need a beat. You I'm know what I need a beat to? What? On this podcast alone, Donnie, when, you, when we're going through editing, make sure you ding every single time Van talks about this, this podcast in particular. Because it's been a while since you've done this. Who mm. you know and who your friends are. You've done it at least four or five times on this podcast alone. Oh, this, let's just on, put, this, let's, on this podcast? Yes, let's just put up I a tally. It? Look, I'm telling you. Uh, well, Bird, well, Bird, Trinidad James, Amber Rose. Who what? else has he said that? These people are like, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. All I'm saying is, I need a beat from Hush. Amber Rose Hush wants to come on the show. Bird. I need a beat from Hush. Amber Rose wants to come on the show. I reached out to Bird. We were talking about one of his artists. Roddy Rich is his artist. Uh, Trinidad James, Jews a nigga. It just, it so happens that I know people that are in the sphere of what's going on, Rachel. We talked, you know what? Bullshit. You talked about somebody you knew. You talked about Hannah cool. B., a reckless N-word user. <laughs> okay. And you brought, you brought okay. her up. So I, you not got one too. Not the same thing. Yes, it is. Not, not she was your friend thing. until you turned your back on her for clout. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Some people say that. Some people no, say that. Who says there that? Are. Really? It's wild what these Bachelor Nationers will say. Speaking of that, it premieres tonight. Who's the Bachelor? I'm so out of touch. I'm so out of touch. I had no idea until somebody said that to me today at work. Um, there's two Bachelorettes at the same time. Uh, 
they doing a nigga and a white girl again? You would think, right? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that sound right? No, two white women. Okay, two white women, double the Karens. Are they? Um, are they? I mean, what's happening now? Like they have, so they're not woke no more. I, there, are, there are people who are upset because the bachelor said they're being progressive moving forward, but yet they had an opportunity to have two, and they chose two white women. Oh, they're not doing. They're not doing two. They got. They're not, they're not doing two black women. They did, like, no, you guys, no. Get, but I think somebody wanted them to be so, the other one to be something else, not black. It could have been so, like another another ethnicity. Maybe one of them is. I don't know. I don't. I honestly yeah. don't know. I know you, their names. Maybe one of them is something else. You did that to Amber, so you might be doing it to these ladies too. Anyway, it's like well, you know, Rachel. God damn it. Let's get to the big deal of the day. We're 30 Let's minutes. Get, you in. would think that was it. <laughs> that was the, well, that well, was one of our topics. Roddy was Rich one was topics. one of our topics. Well, the big deal of the day is something a little bit more important. We'll come back to it on the other side of this break. All right. Joe Biden signs executive order on abortion access amid pressure from Democrats. Two weeks after the Supreme Court. Supreme, Supreme Court. Supreme. You know what? I would rather <laughs> Supreme the clothing brand run uh, the uh, the judiciary than the Supreme Court. I don't trust them. Two weeks after they overturned Roe versus Wade, which is still a breathtaking statement to say, President Joe Biden on Friday signed an executive order aimed at protecting access to abortion nationwide despite efforts by some states to outlaw or severely restrict it. Restrict it. Biden spoke about it alongside Vice President Kamala Harris and the Secretary of Health and Human services. He said that the decision two weeks ago was extreme and totally wrong. Give me the audio from the president. You know, let me close with this. The court and its allies are committed to moving America backwards with fewer rights, less autonomy, and politicians invading their most personal de decisions. Remember the reason of the decision has an impact much beyond Roe and the right to privacy generally. Marriage equality, contraception, and so much more is at risk. This decision affects everyone, unrelated to choice, beyond choice. We cannot allow an out-of-control Supreme Court, working in conjunction with extremist elements of the Republican Party, to take away freedoms and our personal autonomy. The choice we face as a nation between the mainstream and the extreme, between moving forward and moving backwards, between allowing politicians to enter the most personal parts of our lives and protecting the right of privacy. Yes. Yes. Embedded in our Constitution. This is a choice. This is a moment. The moment. The moment to restore the rights that have been taken away from us. And the moment to protect our nation from the extremist agenda that is antithetical to everything we believe as Americans. Now I'm going to sign this executive order. All right. President urged women specifically to practice their political power by doing what, Rachel? Voting. <laughs> uh, make sure to give the Democrats the majorities they need to codify abortion rights into federal law. Hey, he's not wrong about that. We laugh at this. We don't want to make this. Uh, we don't want to cut our nose off to spite our face. Voting is the best way to make sure that we have the um, the ability to be disappointed. No, I'm just joking. Voting is the best way for us to have the political power <laughs> to make sure that we can codify real and to do some other things. Rachel, why don't you tell people what's actually in the executive order? Okay, so listen, Biden, he focuses on a few key things. One of those is protecting medication abortion access. So what he would do is call on the Department of Health and Human Services to continue to identify ways to preserve access to medication abortion, which the administration has made more available during the pandemic. Um, the other thing is guaranteeing emergency care. So the administration is considering updating guidance for providers and hospitals under the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, which requires patients experiencing a medical emergency are provided stabilizing treatment. Another thing is strengthening contraception access, because 
as you know, there have been plenty of articles already out there that are already saying that it's harder to get like the plan B pill and things of that nature. So they announced the a plan to send $3 million in additional funding to different providers to build out family planning services um, to provide better access to inc- for emergency contraception and IUDs. They're also going to be providing more resources and information to offer more info to people about abortion access in different states. And then um, patient pr- protect, uh, oh, oh, they're going to protect patient data. So I don't know if you guys have seen these articles out there that are that are saying that listen, delete any period tracking apps, or or if you're inter- doing internet research in regards to this, to delete that because they're going to be tracking that possibly in these states that are banning abortion to determine who is pregnant and who possibly could get an abortion. So um, <clears throat> they're going to the executive order is asking the FTC, which is an imp- an independent agency, to weigh efforts that could shield how this data is used. And then also the executive order is going to protect the security of clinics because there's a lot of violence and anti-abortion demonstrations um, that are happening in front of these abortion clinics. So all of that is a step, right? He can't alone, he doesn't have the power to undo what Roe v. Wade or this decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. He doesn't have that power, but he's created this executive order, which is a first step. But a lot of people are saying that there it's only a step. There's so much more, not so much more, but there's more that could be done. Now, we know the Biden administration has already said they're not going to get rid of the filibuster. They're not going to expand the court and they're not going to. And this might be recently announced. They're not going to allow clinics to be on um, federal land. They're not entertaining that because that they say that that could open up or go lead to a dangerous place. But one of the things that they are asking for, or they're pushing for, and I don't know if they're going to do this is declaring it a public health emergency. Did you see this? So like if they, if they do declare this a public health emergency, then they may be able to suspend certain functions of the government. I don't know how useful this will be in regards to this, but that's something they're trying to do as well. So, I mean, he's trying to do something, right? But how much can he really do now that this is overturned? Okay. I have a couple of issues here, not issues, questions. And we might need to get Caroline Corbin on this because I've been thinking. Go ahead. And I'll ask you as a legal eagle. Oh, no. <laughs> if in fact we do get to 55 which is a number that some <clears throat> political pundits thinks, think that we can get to uh, if the turnout is high enough and Roe is codified into law if a 6-3 Supreme Court majority is seemingly going to last throughout the lifespan of these justices is mm-hmm. it possible that the amendment itself could be before the Supreme Court as they hear whether or not that amendment is constitutional? Is it possible that that amendment could be um, uh, nullified by the Supreme Court? My gut and my knowledge of the Constitution says, yeah, they could look at a, at a constitutional amendment and, and deem it uh, and deem it unconstitutional. So it seems to me, and I don't know that that's the case, and this is lower What amendment learning. are you trying to say is un- would be unconstitutional? Well, not an amendment. Okay, so like the the law, right? If you create a law to codify Roe into law, right? If you codify Roe into mm-hmm. Roe, you'd have to amend the Constitution, right? Couldn't the Supreme Court say that, hey, based upon how we interpret what the law is supposed to be, couldn't that be challenged in court and then sued upon? And then couldn't they then say, uh, couldn't they then say that amendment is unconstitutional? Couldn't the Supreme Court still undo the efforts to codify Roe into law if the court is 6 3? Um, you know what? I don't know this if that's a, a Car- thing. This is a Caroline question. <laughs> this is a Caroline question. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I need but, to ask. I need to ask somebody this right now. Let me call Jabril real quick. 
You guys, Jabril is my brother. He's a Stanford educated law nigga. Let's see if he knows. I don't know if codifying makes it into an amendment. It's just a, it's like a statute, right? I have no clue. Like, I think you're, it's not going to make it an amendment. I don't okay. think that's the case. You, I, you're the legal eagle. I don't know. I know, but I don't do con law. That's a Jabril. whole nother beast. How are you? Shut the fuck uh -huh. up. Um, you're on the podcast right now. We have a question. Okay. What does it mean? I mean, we know this part, but just explain it to our uh, our listeners. What does it mean to codify Roe into law? Uh, it means that you know Congress and uh, the, the the House basically comes and says that this is now the law of the fifty states above what the Supreme Court said. So okay, it means the Democrats have to fight for it. So ooh, a little spicy there, huh? <laughs> You're getting a little spicy there, huh, Jay Brill? Okay, that part that part we knew. Let me ask you a question. Let's say that 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 uh, the Democrats get to fifty five in the Senate, they ha and they hold the House, right? So therefore, they have the votes that they need um, to codify Roe because they'd have the extra two senators to carve out the filibuster on it and beat Mansion and Cinema, right? They're right there. They have all the votes. They get to the votes that they need. If they were to pass an amendment that codified Roe into law, could the Supreme Court, could that amendment then be challenged based on a lawsuit and the Supreme Court, which is 6-3, be hearing whether or not that amendment is constitutional and we get right back to square one? You're talking about if they did a, if they did a constitutional amendment, like with the 50 states ratified? No. If you're talking about whether or not they could pass a law that says, I mean, listen, this Supreme Court isn't is does not the rule of law doesn't matter to the Supreme Court. So they'll do whatever they want. They are trying to enforce an agenda. Um in terms of technicalities, no, they shouldn't be able to, but you know, the law's broken. Hmm. All right. So what you're saying is that if the Democrats get the votes, that the Supreme Court would then be powerless to fuck with the Constitution. They're never powerless, but yes. Technically, there's a lot of ways that we can strip their power if Biden or any of the lawyers actually had any, uh, I don't know, is balls inappropriate? Hmm. 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 What are you, what are you benching these days? Uh, I'm down to 315. I'll strongly do it. <laughs> All right, well. Let's be it. Look, I didn't know. I still want to talk to Caroline about it because... I didn't get convinced. Well, by the way, thought wars. This is uh, this is one where we're gonna throw it back to you. Uh, I'm gonna do my research and have the answer for this by the time we get back to the next uh, podcast. Because this is what I this is this is my point in doing this. I was just thinking about this before we got out here. Um, I apologize actually for not doing the research on it, but I was doing hip hop hop massages all day and fuck you guys. Anyway, so here's the deal. The reason why I was thinking about this is because I'll be honest, Rachel. If, in fact, getting to 55 or 53 or whatever, if getting the votes in the Senate is the only way to protect women's reproductive rights, okay, if that's the only way, mm -hmm. we have to stop bitching. We have to stop bitching about the Democrats. Bitching, bitching to Biden. We have to stop bitching about, about the Biden. Democrats. We have to stop. We, what we have to do then is put mission accomplishment ahead of our disenchantment with the party. And just go balls to the walls to protect our sisters and our mothers and really us to protect America, because this is something that affects all of Americans. And so uh, I want to make sure and I'm going to dig into this as much as possible now that the show is over and I'll have time to be the, the, the bookworm nerd that I want to be. I'm going to. Dig into this as much as possible to understand every single thing that is possible for the White House to be able to do uh, currently. But if the only way for us to get this done, we have to kind of put things, in my opinion, I'm willing to put things in the back of my mind, in the back of my head, excuse me, and I'm willing to put things to the side, should I say, uh, and just try to elect people. It's not for the Democrats. It's not for any one political party. 
try to elect people that are going to deliver on protecting women's reproductive rights, that is going to deliver on violence and policing, that's going to deliver on voting rights, that's going to deliver on things like that. I'm, I'm willing to do that, not for the sake of a party, but I just don't want to waste any more time complaining about what they are or are not doing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I do. I do think it's important, though, because we talk about the messaging of the Democrats and a lot of people are like, they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything. Well, he did sign an executive order. He's trying to do something within his power. So I do think it's important to say to state whether you feel like it's adequate or not. Uh -huh. I think it's important to at least acknowledge the fact that they are trying to do something within their powers and are working on trying to do thing, a little things a little bit more. But you're absolutely right. It's exactly what we had to do in the last election. Right. We had to go out there. We had, we sh you should always be voting, right? But we were pushing it even more so to protect our rights as, well, really as black people because of what was on the, the, the ballot, um, or the issues that were on the ballot for last, uh, presidential election. So it's important to do that again, right? Yeah. I, it's the same thing. It's very true. All right. Uh, Doja Cat, did you see this story? I did. Okay. So let me tell you guys what happened. Um, Doja Cat responded to some backlash. Backlash. She called out Stranger Things star Noah Shap for leaking DMs about co-star Joseph Quinn. Now, if you watch the end of uh, Stranger Things, spoiler, Joseph Quinn. I haven't Quinn, seen the last like 10 minutes, but okay. thank you. Go Joseph ahead. Quinn just, has a big just... moment. Me already saw this. It's Eddie, right? You know, Eddie. Oh, yeah. I've seen Eddie's moment. Yeah. yeah. Eddie has a big moment. Eddie's in his, in his thing. Doja Cat like Eddie. Doja Cat like her son, Eddie. She's 26 years old. And she hit up Noah Schapp, who plays Will on the show, and asked him to hook her up with uh, Joseph Quinn. <laughs> Will, um, <laughs> for some reason, Noah. posted the DMs. Noah posted the DMs. To TikTok. How old is Noah? He's 17. Oh, Noah, he's 17. Noah posted the DMs to TikTok. <laughs> and Doja said it was so unbelievably socially unaware and whack. Social media got on Doja Cat's ass. Oh, like, I didn't see this. Oh, Why? Yeah. Because they're like, he's 17 year old, he's a 17 year old kid. Why are you DMing him asking him about co stars and shit? Well, what do you most of do? the co-stars, what are most of the co-stars are 70, like around that age. So it's not like she had a choice to really DM somebody who's older, but. Yeah, she could have. She could have DM Joseph older. Quinn. She said she couldn't find it. Did you read the message? She was like, I don't, she goes, I can't find his DM. And he's like, here it is. And he gives it to her. Yo. Okay. <laughs> you got to be able to find it. You got to be able to find him. Okay. So, so, so you got to be able to find him. You got to find him. You can't. Let me ask you a question. Let's say that, I don't know, The weekend oh. wanted to hook up with, I have no clue. Uh, uh, give me some young hot lady. From something. You mean that's older than seventeen. That's older than seventeen. The weekend wants to hook up with um somebody from Euphoria. Uh, no. Correct. They're too young. Uh Florence Pugh from the Marvel show. She plays Black okay. Widow. Okay. Let's say he DM'd a 17 year old girl to get the information to talk to the other girl. Y'all okay. don't think I'm not saying that it's weird. I'm I don't not saying think it's weird. It's like a little. It's not no, weird. No, they're co-stars. It's, like a, it's awkward. He's not. No, he's not saying anything inappropriate or Doja in this in this example. She didn't say anything. She's just like, "Hey, do you mind if you give this person?" I I don't think that's. It's not far fetched. That's their co their coworkers. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I wouldn't think that me asking you, you might tell your friends and be like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe this Doja cat." Or you might even say on a live, but to screen, he should have like done take that. a screenshot of the messages and post them. It's like Noah Shap has DM'd me. I didn't screenshot the messages. Noah Shap DM'd you, Kalika? Yes. 
Wait, 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 hold, wait I called you Kalika. Hold on. Noah Shap, <laughs> Noah Shap DM'd you, Rachel Lindsay. Yes, yes, he did. You, you, Rachel Lindsay, have gotten a DM from <laughs> Noah Shap. I have. About what? And I did screenshot it. He asked me to send a video for his friend's birthday because she's a fan. And he's like, can you send my friend a birthday shout out video? And I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. I can do it. So you know Noah Shap. I don't know Noah Shap. You snap. But Noah asked. (laughs) 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 So this is an interesting wrinkle. I didn't realize this. So a 17 year old reached out to me. Might have been 16 because this was last year. Reached out to me. Reached out to me. Was that inappropriate? No. He was asking his friend. His friend is a fan. And I sent him a video for his friend to tell her happy birthday. Such a crazy world. I don't think that, I think that Noah Shop was wrong for what he did, but he's a kid. Well, but but did you see Doja's full? She acknowledges I that. Yeah. yeah, I thought her response was perfect. So I don't I understand why people- I didn't think it was perfect. I thought her response I thought it was, great. was, I get that you're a kid, but what you did was so putrid and whack and fucked up. You better than anyone. I love Doja Cat. Love Doja Cat. You better than anyone should know that we make mistakes on social media, right? She's she, but she acknowledged that. I saw that. She, That's why I don't feel said, like she should have gone public with it. She said she was embarrassed. Yeah. Like clearly she was embarrassed, but she says we all I know I've made my share of mistakes, but come on. Like, come on. Question. I think she if, also was thinking we're both celebrities. Like you would think that there was a little bit more respect. <laughs> yeah. Like she was taken aback by that. I would be shocked too if I were her. But can the Doja Cat Joseph Quinn relationship work now? I I don't know. I don't know. There might be too much attention around it. Joseph might not want all that attention. Joseph is the man. <laughs> I fuck with Joseph, man. Eddie. Eddie. Eddie is the man. Like Joseph. I had never seen him without his wig until this came up. And I was like, oh, that's what he looks like in real life. You think he's handsome? He's not for me. Hmm. So look, uh, let's talk about Fox News. It's a lot of slavery stuff going on these days. Speaking of that, I want to talk about something. Okay. I learned a lesson over the weekend. I don't know if you saw this. So I posted a video, not video, I posted a, uh, we talk about slavery. Slavery is a very divisive, um, uh, emotionally draining, yet important piece of not just American history, but world history. There was an entire economy that powered nations of the world um, that was the backbone of international trade. That was based upon our ancestors. I'm talking about specific slavery that existed here in America, the transatlantic slave trade, all of those things. I believe that to be very important. And I believe that uh, um, the historical accuracy of understanding the transatlantic slave trade, to me, doesn't make us blacker or any less black. But it does give some historical context to the horror of white supremacy. And I think that historical context is necessary to understand how we reconcile things if we want to build American and world communities uh, with people that at least have the legacy of tremendous atrocity against black people. I really do believe that. So there was a, mm-hmm. a tweet that I saw. And the tweet was... Uh, um, the tweet was um, this. I'll read the tweet now. The tweet was from Astro Bay at Hood Healer. What I'm saying is that I didn't know who this person was, but it doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know who this sister was. It doesn't matter. And this is the tweet. The tweet was, uh, have you ever seen an actual slave ship? I've seen all kinds of artifacts, but never a ship. Have y'all? And then it's And then there's a response that was sent on July 9th. There was a response and it says, Shit, not real. I'm starting to believe the transatlantic slave trade is a fake story. I clipped that, put it on my um, my Instagram, and I said, we laugh at shit like this, but, and don't get me wrong, it's chuckle-worthy, 
but it's so so dangerous. There are people in this country who are making up as making up history as they go along, and these people are depending on your ignorance to, to depower your story. If you have no story, you have no identity. Be careful. Uh, the reason why I said that is because I think that number one, the transatlantic slave trade is real. There are reasons why there are no intact slave ships. There are not very many ships from that period. Period. Uh, there are only around twenty to. 25 ships existing pre-1808, which is, you know, whenever the slave trade would have become uh, illegal in most places. And so for, for to me, I don't think the fact that there are no ships means that we don't have significant evidence that the slave trade existed. I think that there are more than enough artifacts, more than enough of a paper trail and really history on both sides that tells you that this that this happened. And mm-hmm. in the times that we live in, Having that history out there and having people that are trying to tell you, hey, this never happened, this never happened, this never happened. It's not coming from inside of the community all the time. It's coming from people who are saying that the history that you're talking about is not real, that whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to rewrite new history here in America. I thought that that was it, that that struck me as something that I should kind of uh, speak about. Um, So I put it up there and I realized that the hood healer is a black lady on instagram and twitter and who does a lot of stuff has a lot of follower followers has a message that a lot of people really really love and really lean on her and that uh when i put it out there even though i stand by the substance of what what what's in the the tweet what's in the 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 the, uh, the caption meaning i believe that the transatlantic slave trade is real And I personally don't see the value in discussing whether or not it's not real. Now, I've since done some research and seen that a lot of people believe that there were black indigenous people here to North America prior to the transatlantic slave trade and that they made up the transatlantic slave trade to make us feel like America wasn't our land or that we have no claim to this land. I am not going to even broach that or approach that topic. That's something that me and my uh, and my grandmother used to talk about. That's something that um that you hear a lot when you're in South Louisiana, it actually doesn't have much to do with what I'm talking about, right? Um, uh, but what I will say is this, is for me personally, I did learn a lesson. The lesson I learned is this, is that for me, having a discourse like that, and I'm gonna leave it up just so I don't run for it from it, but having a discourse like that on Twitter inside or on instagram inside the community is less than productive like she she hit me up she goes hey van you shouldn't have done that blah 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 i mean you can go to my instagram and read her whole message and the overall takeaway was that yo if you want to know more about what i think about this hit me up and i'll explain it to you but putting it on there and putting it out there and subjecting me to maybe ridicule and scorn from your followers is probably not the best way to do that she's a, she's absolutely right 100 she's right. right she's absolutely right now what's in these tweets is wrong but she's a black lady and as a black lady she doesn't just deserve and i do that to everyone right i'll, I'll do that to if i see a bad example or uh, like a bad idea, what I'll do is I'll confront that idea. Like, I don't like this, Mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. I'll do that to everybody. But being that she's a black lady, she doesn't deserve what everybody else gets. What she probably deserves is a little bit of extra understanding and a little bit of extra care. And I did not do that. So while I don't feel bad about thinking what I thought, because I don't think there's anything to what they are talking about. What I will do um, is I will make sure that in the uh, future, when I'm talking to black people that I disagree responsibly. So I do want to say mm. that. I, I want to make sure I put that out there for everybody to hear my voice. It's like I'll disagree, but I'll disagree responsibly. So that's a lesson that a 42-year-old man can learn. Okay, now, uh, talking about slavery, this is what the fuck I'm talking about. Fox News host complains that she went to the Jefferson Museum and it was critical because it focused on slavery. Fox hosts have complained that exhibits at Thomas Jefferson's Monticello home leave visitors feeling ashamed because they focus too much on his ownership of slaves. Donnie, run the audio. Still inspires everybody today. All men are created equal and all this kind of stuff. A great architect, scholar, you know, Thomas Jefferson. And instead I got, you know, exactly the opposite. It just uh, yeah, debunking his, his history, his reputation, uh, putting him down, uh, demoralizing everybody on my tour. It was, it was just sad, sadly predictable too. 
these days. I just thought that maybe Monticello would be protected from this uh, disease of wokeism, but. I don't believe him. <laughs> I don't. I have a feeling that if we went on that tour, I'm sure that all those things he mentioned about Thomas Jefferson were mentioned as well. And guess what? What else is a part of his past? Slavery. And I'm sure they talked about it. And if they had said one sentence about it, he still, he needed some story or narrative to fit what the, the rhetoric that Fox News is putting out there. And so this was an opportunity for him to talk about it. And of course, use one of their favorite words, woke. I don't believe this, but let's just say, let's just say it, what he's saying is true. All right. Let's just say it's true. And he walked away feeling ashamed. Okay. I feel like you walked away feeling ashamed. I, I I don't know what to tell you. I don't feel bad that you feel ashamed. The fact that Thomas Jefferson owned slaves and they discussed it at great length, according to him, in this tour. It's true. It's a fact. We all know it. It happened at the very place that you were doing a tour of. So what's the problem in discussing it? I, I, I don't understand. If you felt bad, that's your own personal problem. And maybe you need to flush that out and figure out why that made you feel bad that they were talking about slavery. But the fact is, it's true. And if you're taking some type of historical tour, then they're going to give you the history of it, which includes a not so great history in regards to Thomas Jefferson of slavery. So I, what's the problem? You fucked what, like, uh, you I, fuck, like you, are you, you supposed to walk Jefferson? away? Are you... I, I don't need to, but, but here's the thing, but here's the thing. What, how are you supposed to walk away and feel? Were you supposed to feel patriotic? Were you, were you supposed to feel, I don't understand. You were there to explore Thomas Jefferson and his past and his history and this plantation or this museum that focused on his life and, and, and his place in this country that includes slavery. What's the problem? What's the problem? I'm I, I'm so over people trying to erase the negative parts of people's history, the people that you deem as heroic. You don't want to talk about the bad side of it. But I honestly don't believe this even happened. I think this is an exaggerated story. Let me get this out of the way real quick. Thomas mm -hmm. Jefferson was absolutely brilliant. So you guys know. Thomas Jefferson had 17 days to complete the Declaration of Independence, and that motherfucker did it in two. <laughs> that motherfucker was smart he was a brilliant gorgeous mind that motherfucker was a raping savage dedicated slaver and so was Washington and the rest of them deal with it I'm not going to go do a whole long hyperbolic journey into the annals of American or world history. I'm going to say two things are true. Number one, Thomas Jefferson, brilliant guy, George Washington, great general. Also, Washington, dedicated slaver that was so dedicated to slavery. I've said this before. A law was passed saying that your slaves had to be free after six months. George Washington would take all of his slaves, bring them below the Mason-Dixon line every six months to reset the clock on their slavery rather than let them go free. He fought against having to give the human capital that he had back. Facts. Also, Thomas Jefferson held his children into slavery. What the fuck? His kids his children were slaves. He didn't free them. So uh, the reality is, you guys, your heroes didn't have capes. You know what they had? Whips. Whips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's enough. All right. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of slaves, Herschel Walker <laughs> gave a... Uh, 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 um, uh, a brand new interview, Donnie Run It. The pipeline. Yeah. Get rid of the pipeline. Get rid of our energy. Start this downfall. Because we need energy for everything. 
Do y'all know that? Yeah. Yeah. And they would talk about the Green New Deal. You know, climate change. I'm going to help y'all with that real quickly. And I'm going to do it in the Wrightsville way. So you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> we, in America, have some of the cleanest air and cleanest water of anybody in the world. Yes, so what we do is we're going to put from the Green New Deal millions or billions of dollars cleaning our good air up. So all of a sudden China and India ain't putting nothing in their cleaning that situation up. So it all that bad air is still there. But since we don't control the air, our good air decided to float over to China, bad air. <laughs> so when China gets our good air, their bad air got to move. <laughs> so it moves over to our good air space. And now we got to clean that back up. I listened to this audio. And then I closed my eyes and put my head down and took a nap. I, we laugh and we joke about Herschel Walker, but he is actual, actually a contender against Warnock. It, it's actually going to be a close race. And so I know that we're preaching to the choir pretty much when we play this clip and we talk about, you know, Herschel Walker and, you know, how unfit he is to run and how, you know, he says things that don't make any sense. And, but yet they're, they're applauding him and laughing with him and voting him, you know, like he's already won a, a primary. They're voting him to be the contender, or uh, you know, putting him up to be the contender against Warnock. This, I, I, I if you know people in Georgia, if you live in Georgia, you got to do what you can to be, to fight against Herschel Walker. That's all I can really say to this. I can't even keep laughing over it. It's that because you have to take it seriously because he's actually going up against Warnock and it's going to be a close race and people are simply voting along with the parties and they're not listening to the things that he's saying or what he's not saying maybe I should say I I don't I don't even know what to say anymore when it comes to Herschel Walker by the way I apologize to Herschel Walker I shouldn't call that man a slave that's the worst thing you can call a black man he's dumb but he's not a slave so I apologize to you Herschel go ahead and get you Everybody get your hoe on. Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't uh, know. I, it's it, 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 look, Rev, Reverend Warnock is uh, going to be up for re-election. We have to make sure that down there in Georgia, we don't lose that seat. Okay? So we're going to work our asses off to make sure that the bad air that comes out of Herschel Walker's lungs doesn't pollute our ears uh, as a senator. We just can't do it. Let's take a break. Pregnant lady says, actually, you know what? No, I don't do that story. It's crazy. You know, we have a lot of fucking like down stories, but there's one I want to talk about real quick. That's not on the, um, it's not on the, the rundown before we get to Charles Barkley. Okay. I don't know if you saw this, but Ray J is changing his name. Man, what? man, of all the stories that we could talk about, did you, you see skip it? Skip over them. To I saw what you posted on social, and I okay. quickly regretted it as soon as I saw it. Why? Because <laughs> it's stupid. It's stupid that he's changing his name. It's stupid that I'm talking about it. It's stupid that you posted it, and it's stupid that he's changing his name. Why? Because who cares? I, to be honest with you, I felt the same way when Diddy did it. Just change when your Diddy name. Diddy changed his name? You didn't like that? I'm Puff Daddy. I'm Diddy. I'm Love. I'm Sean Combs. Okay. Be who, like, but then it makes me, it makes, it gets media attention. And I'm not even sure that Ray J's really got that much attention. I feel like you're the one giving it more attention than anybody else. But go ahead. Tell everybody you know what he's changing really his name about? to and why. He's tell everybody what he's changing. Ray J's changed his name to Tron. It's taking effect next year. He's going to change his name to Tron. Why wait? Okay. 
And he's changing his name to Tron because the reality of the situation is that um, he feels like it's time for a new beginning. So his name is Tron. That's that. I can play the I'm audio. Tell you. Play the audio. No. Play the audio. D- Donnie, play the audio. Because I want to talk to Rachel about something after this audio is played. Call me Ray, you can call me Jay, you can call me Ray J. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but, but, but my real my, my real name is Willie. Willie Ray yeah. Norwood Jr. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Willie. So and I'm a junior, so Ray Jr. But my dad has owned Willie. That's his name. That's right. my dad's name. Yeah. He's Willie. So I'm Ray J. But I'm changing that too. I'm going with a new name, top of the year. Ray J is into he's 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 lived, you know what oh, I mean? It's yeah. time oh, to got it. it's time to evolve. Oh, so, okay. so can my you give new, us a my new name? Okay. New name will be okay. We're gonna go viral with this go. Tron. <laughs> Tron? Tron. Hi Tron. 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 Yeah, why and they Tron? laughed at him. Because yeah. I'm digital, I'm, I'm in a digital mindset right now. Right. I'm inside the computer, right? <laughs> I'm in. It's like a new matrix. Yeah. See, new matrix. I don't want to go that deep. I feel it. Because he can't. There's nowhere to go, Ray J. There's nowhere to go. They laughed at him, Van. They laughed at him. And at this rate, we're going to end up having a, a Ray J segment, and I don't want it. So please stop. Last thing I'll say before we move on. <coughs> What is your problem with the Norwood family? Don't do that. You have a lot to say about about Brandy and Rage. About Tron. Like, did not have, have a lot to say about Brandy. I did not have a lot to say about Brandy. His name ain't Tron not. yet. His name is not Tron yet. His name I, is not I, Tron. I, I did not have a right lot now. to say about Brandy. You did. You called Brandy sensitive. Like you, you, you like. You, she was sensitive in your comments. She, she wasn't sensitive, man. She was expressing herself. What's the deal? in a sensitive way? What's the deal? And that's okay. I said <laughs> I said something that struck a nerve with her, but in reality, my comment wasn't towards her. It was towards Tron. <laughs> And they laughed at him. They laughed at him in the eye. Even the host laughed at him. Everybody's okay. laughing. Stop. Is it, is it okay if we get are you down to have Ray J on the show so we could talk out? We of course we could have on. we can talk out. I, I don't have issues. You know you who do. my issue is? My you issues do. with you. How? Because you continue to make him a topic of conversation on this podcast. I know way more about Ray J than I care to because of you. My issue is that you keep bringing Tron up, okay? But bring him on the podcast. I'll definitely bring him on because the podcast. By the because by the time he comes on the podcast, I want him to flush out. I do want him to go there with Tron. Because he said he's, you know, he's not he's not ready to go there yet. I want him to fully explain the evolution to Tron. How we got here. Where we're going with Tron. You but do you have an issue with him naming himself Tron? Because it seems like he does. I don't I don't like I don't like the name change thing. And I didn't just oh, and I me. didn't just I changed and my I didn't, name. I d- to what? I added the junior. Haven't you always been a junior? <laughs> no. I, I, I added the junior after dad passed oh. away. Okay. A purpose. A purpose <laughs> you have. <laughs> a pur- so I'm saying this is not particular just to Tron. I said I didn't like it when Diddy did it either. Right. Tron. Make yeah. it a nickname. Um, but to be honest... I kind of like the name Tron. It's good. I, my, I have a friend. <laughs> I have a friend. He, he goes, uh, you know what? I'm not going to bring him up because I, I should bring him up. Because Is that another ding? Is no, that gonna be it's a not ding? another ding. I'm not going to bring him up because he is a very well known around LA. And you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to bring him up. He's very well known around LA and his name is Tron. Oh my God, it's Tron. On Instagram, he's an MC at all the clubs. And the reality is, I wonder if this is stepping on Tron a little bit. I want to have Tron on the podcast. <laughs> Bring to Tron see, on. To see if Tron feels it's like he's lot. threatened by Ray J. Tron is worse <laughs> with made entertainment. Tron is a big deal. I want to know if Tron feels like, shout out to my nigga Tron, man. I don't want to know if Tron feel like Ray J coming on this block. You're going to start a beef. 
I'm not gonna start no beef. Uh, Charles Barkley gave one million dollars to an HBCU. Which HBCU do you think it was? Well, I know which one it was. Okay, so which one was it? Spellman. I'll be honest with you. We some broke ass niggas, man. We are. When I say we, I mean Southern University. We some broke ass niggas, man. I would like we are part of the broke ass nigga wing of the HBCUs. I keep saying this, guys. Please, for the love of God, spread it around. I'm, 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 I'm being, man. This is not a shot at Spelman at all. Please spread it around. It's like okay. it, some broke ass niggas around the HBCU situation need bread bad. A million dollars, a lot of money. Like you know what I'm saying? Like Spelman, it's a lot of money. I'm not. I'm not. I love the fact that the ladies in Spelman got this money. Please spread it around, man. Well, I thought the same thing because we had this discussion before. But then mm. I saw that he, since 2016, has donated to a number of HBCUs, mm -hmm. not just the big ones. Miles College, Tuskegee University, nice. and Alabama A&M. Nice. So, and Morehouse and Clark as well. But it's nice to see that he is spreading his money around to other HBCUs that don't always get the recognition as the big ones like Howard and Morehouse and Spelman and Hampton. So... And it's it's nice to see that he's he's spreading the wealth. That's so Charles me. doesn't necessarily fit into this. He so you doesn't. guys give Charles props for that. You do? I do, man. I'm not. You do? Like, you know, I, and I'm not even like this. I'm really not, not like this. I'm not. No, nah, I'm not one of these guys to be like, where am I at? I'm not like that. You know? But. This time I feel like this, man. I'm getting cranky in my old age. Like, I'm not one of these. You know, Yo, where am I? Everybody eat a piece of pizza? You don't give me a piece of pizza? Fuck <laughs> your pizza. Here's the thing. If if you don't give me a piece of pizza and everybody's having pizza, I'll never eat pizza <laughs> with you again. You can't have none of my pizza. You know what I mean? But I'm not going to complain. But in this situation, I want the rest of these HBCUs to get their piece of pizza. That's all I'm saying. To me, I don't understand and get it. All right? Donnie, update us, uh, update us on your country problems. Uh, well, I'm still on the road. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida right now. So this is a different kind of country from Atlanta I, I was, country. You got new country problems. Yeah, yeah. Humid, humid country problems. And the rain is crazy. But the wildlife is not as out of check where I am right now. It's a little more uh, mowed down. The uh, There's not like snakes and uh, there's lizards everywhere I go, but the snake is still alive until I go back home and make that decision. I haven't made the decision when it comes to the snake just yet. But Donnie, do you want to know whatever what the jackals, you decide to do? Do you want to know if the jackals voted? I think I know. What did, but, the, what, what did let, the jackals let the, say? Uh, I'm what did they say? Pretty sure the consensus is to call the wildlife and fisheries and uh, get them to take care of the snake humanely as in like remove it um but i think in second place was it? to kill it that's what my wife wants me to do but not for the sake of the snake she wants it to do it for the sake of me she doesn't trust me to be able to kill the snake without being bitten so she's like let somebody else handle it i can do okay it, so these are the these are the votes <laughs> from the poll resort from the from the polls from the polls poll results a lot of votes here 115 people voted you should call the local wildlife center 69 people voted that you should kill the snake which these people are only trying to be cool with rachel i guarantee you no one really feels that way <laughs> like seriously no one wants you to kill that animal just for inconvenience that's not you. true it's fucking insane i can't believe you're just gonna kill the snake because it's in your vicinity like we don't have to share this so earth with it's everyone. a predator it's a <laughs> okay, okay. and it's gotta go oh next time you see a hawk flying through the air why don't you fucking shoot the hawk out of the sky you know That's how a predator i feel about too. birds i i think <laughs> pigeons are predators right okay 49 people say you should leave it be those people i gotta be honest with i don't agree with you i'm not leaving the snake be <laughs> like the snake gotta go all right here you go the snake and hang out snaky with the rest of the people the snake guy. Snakey. Go. Okay. All right. As far as the results of how the fucking rabbit got in Donnie's yard, 
121 people voted that nature is the reason why the rabbit's in your yard, Donnie. Overwhelming Skin. majority. 121 people. 56 people think that the, your Herschel Walker loving neighbors put it there. And the most interesting is four people think that an unexplored possibility <laughs> is why the rabbit is there. Now, okay. I have an update on the rabbit after I got off of the pod and cleaned up the rabbit carcass. Mm -hmm. So right. the way my house works, there's a walkway to my porch. I guess that's how most houses are. Uh, but on the rabbit head and mangled mess was on one side. And as I was cleaning, I saw flies buzzing in my bushes and in there were what looked like rabbit guts. They were like green and kind of melted and it oh was my God. clearly something fleshy. And I'm like, it would only make sense that this came from the rabbit. So I don't know what that means. That's just extra. That's yeah, the update. The, I don't know. The person dropped it in multiple places in your yard, spread out the rabbit. Yeah. That's like some uh, voodoo spell stuff. It seems like not. I'm hoping it's not, but that crossed my mind. Interesting. Donnie, grow the fuck up. <laughs> I lived in the country for a long time, Donnie. When you're living out in the country, you got to deal with a little mystery. All right. OK, um, we got to go. You guys, we have some no serious question of the week. Uh, it's been too, uh, too slam. I will say this. I would like to thank the entire crew of Hip Hop Homicides. I would like to thank 50 Cent and Mona Scott Young. Today was our last day of principal shooting on Hip Hop Homicides. So it doesn't look like I'll be traveling anymore unless we need one or two more interviews, but it won't be a whole show thing. I'll tell you this. This has been a tough show to shoot. Well, congratulations, though. I mean, you did it. You completed mm. it. Jesus. To talk to and here so in Dallas, good. here in Dallas, man, is hot. And it's, it's, it's hot in this bitch. It's so hot in Dallas. I don't understand. I see why you are the way you are now. Why you don't like food and fun. Because you you <laughs> you, you spent too much of your life being, being uncomfortable. Stop. It's hot in Louisiana, but our heat is humid, so it makes you sweat and you, you get cool. You know what? We're ready for you to get out of Dallas so you can stop talking about how hot it is. Okay. Before I go, I want you to guess the temperature in Dallas right now. It's 627. Guess the temperature. Like 100. It's 101 degrees. What the fuck? Man, Wait, Rachel, we just have to, it's 101 just... degrees. It's 630 in the after. God damn. It's it, it, like, what We're the We're just fuck? going through a heat wave. We're just going through a heat wave. Oh, my God. It's I will say, so though, growing up, growing up, it was not this hot. Because I used to run summer track every single summer. And it was not, and we ran from six to eight because it was cooler. That's when all our practices were. And I do not remember it being that high. Oh my it's Lord. Climate change. <sighs> Jesus climate Christ. Change. Tell you thing caps off with not stop learning. I am sweating my fat ass off here in Dallas, Van Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel and Lindsay, I guess. <laughs> Donnie, Bye, guys. You take Bye. us out when I'm a nigga. <laughs> no! I was already planning it. I'm black. I'm brown. I'm big. I'm round. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on. I'm a nigga. I'm a nigga. Come on.